Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing Unit 7 on Natural Selection by discussing Topic 7.7, .7, which is on Common Ancestry. And this is kind of piggybacking a little bit off of our last video, 7.6, which was a long one, um, on evidence of evolution. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about eukaryotes and how, the, uh, how we know eukaryotes came to be and how we know that eukaryotes are all related to each other. And they're all, all eukaryotes come from a common ancestor. Okay, so if you remember this from an earlier unit, I believe you should. Um, I believe we talked about it at the end of unit two. Uh, eukaryotes evolved via endosymbiosis. Organelles, particularly mitochondria and chloroplasts, were formerly smaller prokaryotes that began living within larger cells. Okay, so this here's a picture of uh, eukaryotic evolution here. We have an ancestral prokaryote, um, and it begins to infold its plasma membrane to form some, some kind of proto-nucleus, okay? And eventually it in, intakes a, well, in some cases, a photosynthetic bacterium, in other cases, an aerobic bacterium. And what it became was a, or what, uh, what the bacterium became was an organelle, the mitochondria and the chloroplast. Um, within each one of these newly minted eukaryotic cells. Okay, so this, uh, this old um, photosynthetic bacterium began to live inside the ancestral prokaryote, and, you know, they lived together, and they were all happy and healthy, you know. Uh, the bigger prokaryote provided some, uh, a stable environment for the photosynthetic bacterium, and the photosynthetic bacterium provided a bunch of glucose um, for the eukaryotic, the newly minted eukaryotic plant cell to use for energy. Same idea with the, uh, the mitochondrion. Uh, the aerobic bacterium was taken in by the larger prokaryotic cell, and that eventually became the mitochondrion. You know, it protected the aerobic bacterium, and in response, the aerobic bacterium was able to produce a bunch of ATP using oxygen. All right, um, so that's endosymbiosis. That's the beginning of all eukaryotes. Okay, that's the origin of eukaryotes. And here's the thing. All eukaryotes share structures that indicate that they're all related to one another, besides the fact that they have, you know, mitochondria, and plants have both mitochondria and chloroplasts, okay? Here's, uh, here's some evidence that, you know, they, um, supporting uh, endosymbiosis, okay? The chloroplasts and mitochondria, they have double membranes. They can be produced by a division of pre-existing mitochondria and chloroplasts. They divide like bacteria. They have their own DNA. They have their own ribosomes, and that's all indicative of endosymbiosis. But the fact that all eukaryotes share a common ancestor is supported by the fact that all eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. They all have, um, well, yeah, as, as it says, they have mitochondria, they have chloroplasts, they have lysosomes, they have nuclei, they have endoplasmic reticula, they have um, Golgi apparatus, apparati. Um, that's pretty indicative that they're all related to each other. They all share that. They all share linear chromosomes, okay, like seen here, okay? Bacteria, they don't have linear chromosomes. They have different shapes. They have, they have circular DNA, um, in a lot of cases. Eukaryotes don't. They have linear chromosomes that are packaged with chromatin. Um, and finally, they all have genes that have introns. Okay, so if you remember alternative splicing or just splicing in general, um, introns are the parts that are interfering. They cut, they're cut out um, of the mRNA transcript before it's translated by the ribosome. Okay, so all eukaryotes have genes that have introns that need to be cut out. Okay, that's uncommon. That doesn't happen in prokaryotes. That happens in eukaryotes. All eukaryotes, whether we're talking about an amoeba or a mushroom or a human being, all of those eukaryotes have linear chromosomes. They have genes with introns, and they all have membrane-bound organelles. That all indicates that they are all evolved from a common ancestor that shared these things. And from that common ancestor, it diverged into all the different types of eukaryotes that we see. Okay, over literally like 3 billion years, okay? Um, that's it for this video. It's a short one. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.